tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale and his eye was odd. Yes, he gave the faces of gentlemen who never thereafter were heard of again. He trod a path that few have trod. It's Sweeney Todd. This is the tale of Jonah Javon. Sunday at the zoo, he was slightly odd. Ooh, he used to eat pizza, he used to eat a fork. Then he arrived in Western New York. It's Jonah Javon. It's Jonah Javon. They made a video to even the score. But in its wake, he left Stefan Galore. Ooh, he's banned from areas around Cape Cod, watching films with Taylor Tyrod. It's Jonah Javon! Alright, that's the show, folks. Thanks for joining us, Jonah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> big, o big office fan. Yeah, I don't know. But it was impressive that you guys ran Javon with Sweeney Todd. That was pretty good. Uh, what the hell is the whole pizza thing about? I have never ate pizza with a fork and a knife. We just freaked Out of town? From Boston. I think we got that report from Channel 4. What the hell are you talking about? I've been folding pizza since now. That's yeah, it's great. East Coast. Folks, we are live here at Studio D. Jonah Javon. I gotta fire off this email. You oh, can continue. Come on, Jonah. Oh, he's already too big for here us. Here we go. Yeah, he's, he's not happy that Matt Bobay was here before, but here we go. Tonight in studio, myself, the General, Topher, Maniac, Producer Burrs, and DJ Supreme. Thank you again. Tonight's show sponsor, Rock Bottom. Why? Two for one Goose Bombers, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Let's go. joins us tonight. Been at Channel 2 since, let's see here, 2012. 92. And you've won a couple Emmys? Three. Three. Tell us about that. Because I see that on your Twitter all the time. I'm like, it collects dust. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's just a cool thing to you know, tell people when you're at the bar and trying to pick up girls. You can just say you're an Emmy winner. It'd be great. It's a great call. Yeah, call to a bar. I won an Emmy. Yeah. I'm, so, an, I'm an Emmy winner. Is it, is it a brotherhood I'm, thing? I'm degenerate Al. I'm an Emmy winner. <laughs> So you're talking. <laughs> so you're talking. So you're going to a bar. You're picking up chicks. What, what's your go-to bar in Buffalo? Oh, I, no, no, no. I haven't been picking up, trying to pick up girls in six, seven years, man. It's been six, seven years now. Yeah, man. That that life is not for me. Is that, wow. Wow. Is that is that like setting the tone down a little bit? So you're no. tough. You're tough. We need to fire this thing up. We need to <laughs> play some more train. 93.7 was on the way home. You are leading a little far back into that couch right now. Um, Do you need a pillow? Looks no, like Brad Ryder. Right right. He's fall asleep. Seriously, get this guy a blanket. Oh, man. I'm and another coffee. No, I just, uh, that life is not for me, man. But, um, yeah, a few Emmys, a few awards, but. If they're collecting dust. That's all they do, man. So, and that's not what you should get into this business for, is what I'm saying. Okay. Points. So, what do you get into this business for, then? I like the people. Um, honestly, man. Some of the best experiences I've had in this business are being able to meet people who do incredible things, and uh, they overcome a lot in their lives. Uh, and a guy, all the folks at Twenty Six Shirts, yeah. Del Reed. Oh yeah, doing so great work over there. He's a perfect example of somebody who had a career and he kind of just completely changed the game and decided to, you know, found this this uh, philanthropy and and he helps different families and people in need every two weeks and. It, that's like serving a life for a purpose, and I'm so envious of that. So I try to try to help out as much as we can. And you know, in TV, we get a chance to meet people who, you know, families like that, and tell their stories, and hopefully it inspires other viewers across the, uh, you know, across the region. So that's what I love the most is being able to go out in the community, meet these people, learn their stories. It, it inspires me, and hopefully it inspires inspires everybody else. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about uh, sports. 
Sports, more or less. Doesn't that see? This is what I'm talking about, man. Sports. It's not just sports. in our minds. Are is here, but it's really like here. You're right. I'm looking at my rundown, and nowhere in here do we say we're going to just trash sports overall right out of the gate. But right with that said, gate. I think it's absolutely true. What do you look for inspirationally in life? A lot of people around here, it's sports. They look to the Sabres. They look to the Bills. Those are their escapes from their everyday doldrums. We were just talking about it. You have to go live that 9 to 5. Some people, it's a 5 to 9. You know, it's not exactly what they want to be doing, but sports yeah, is their true. momentary escape from this moment. That's I think true. that that's the purpose it serves for sure. And it might be chief amongst those inspirations for a lot of those people in Western New York. Oh, no, no doubt. And I think that's where I have to, and I think everybody else who works in, in sports from whether it's doing webcasts or podcasts or working on TV, radio, newspaper, doesn't really matter, is that that's exactly what it's for. It's for that escape that people turn away from. Funny thing is over the last, what, year? Sports and politics and everything's been so intertwined. Terrible. You know, it's it's not separate anymore. Well, that's one thing that's separate on the strain is yeah, we definitely keep that out of there. Get it out. We don't no, use the we don't talk, we don't use the p word. We don't use that the p word. Thank you. I don't Absolutely. want to talk about it. That's something that we, we definitely we had a discussion about, about language. One of the words we don't please use don't the turn this into a Twitter feed. This because that's pretty much my whole Twitter feed and timelines are nowadays. People coming at you with that? No, no. It's just a lot of politics and. Uh, you know, it's a reality, but I don't, I don't want to read and talk about it all the time. Frankly, I need I need to hit the pause button with that stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot. So you're at 10K on Twitter now? How's it feel? 10K, Team 10K. Couple Emmys and now 10K. Mr. Five Figures. Wow. I've done some great things. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> have. So you're from Boston, but you're a Bengals fan. <laughs> I am a Bengals fan. Big Bengals win for you. <laughs> Is it, though? <laughs> Is it a big win? The Bengals haven't had a big win since 89. Do you know they're the only team since I've been born to never win a playoff game? Isn't that the real playoff? Let drive? that sit, D. Come who, on, Who cares man. about making the playoffs if you don't win once you're there, right? <laughs> you're flat. You're like, whoa, that, that's Lord. a good point. Wow, I want to complain about the Bills not making the playoffs. Well, you know what? How about making the playoffs and then losing every time? That's not fun. It's not fun. How, well, is, how is Marvin Lewis still the head coach? That's a great question. You know he's going to become, uh, he's going to make the front office at some point there. Oh, yeah. He's not going to be, if he's fired, it's, they're going to move him up the chain of command there. Okay. I think he's kind of a Daryl Strawberry situation with like the late 90s Yankees. I think he's got some serious blackmail material on you the Stangles front office. <laughs> There's no way he's going anywhere. Well, with all the personnel they've had over the last 10 years, that's not, that wouldn't be a surprise. They missed. They should have hired Mike Zimmer to be their head coach when Zim was getting looks to be a full timer, and should have just moved Marvin Lewis up. But they missed their opportunity, and here they are. And uh, I loathe every minute of being a Bengals fan. So you're from Boston. This past spring, you had a clip that went viral, trashing Stephon Gilmore. Is it trashing? Is it trashing? Factually relating what he was saying to what he's done, I think, throughout his career. That's how I view it. How does it feel to be more right about anything ever than you were in that clip? It would have been really bad if that first game, right? Gilmore had like two pick sixes oh. and ten pass deflections, no penalties. And it didn't, it didn't look good but at the start because he forced the fumble. No. And... All right, so I got a lot of grief for that, and, you know, whatever. It, I don't know where people stand on that. Some folks didn't like it. Some people did. Whatever. Um, the whole point was it was meant to be fun. Are you scared, though? Twitter is a very deep well. Oh, dude. Like, if what you, if he gets an interception in the playoffs or something to clinch it? Uh, you know, people are going to be digging that tweet up again. <laughs> the, 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 the tweet of the clip. The clip listen, so. uh, this subject is nuanced because I think for the most part, people enjoyed it. But a lot of folks acted like I kicked someone's dog. And... Uh, That's true. You know, trashed his name. The dude's making millions of dollars playing for the best franchise in the NFL of the last 20 years. He has the last laugh no matter how bad he plays, no matter how many pass interference penalties he has against the Carolina Panthers on the final drive. It doesn't really matter what I say. So, If you saw him in public, what would you say to him? If you guys bumped into each other. I'd say, what's up? What's up? Yeah, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> what, what, what would you say? What, what do you well, know? Here's a question. What do you would you too? avoid him or would you say so? I mean, there's probably other big-nosed dudes with black hair in this world, but... You know. 
So he probably had no idea it's either trash. You know what would be hilarious if there's another reporter in Boston who kind of looks like me and asks him a question and he thinks it's me by accident? That would be funny. And he like goes off on him after a bad game. Ooh. Seeing you in person, you actually look just like my roommate in college who is living in Boston. So actually, I am your roommate. He, he might be college. enjoying it. <laughs> you know. Oh. And for all you know, Topher, you could be a three-time Emmy Award winner. <laughs> You're all three-time Emmy Award winners. It, I was going to, I didn't see anything that touches it. Is it like a brotherhood where since you won the Emmys, you can actually hand down Emmys to other people and stuff? Because then, I mean, Trainer X Sports are winning Emmys is big for us. We need to make sure our viewers know that. Well, we, we got to get you on that Emmy Award winning train. Okay. That's the train you need to be on. Well, this train never stops, so well, easy, easy does it. Choo-choo. I didn't know you guys were the Bills on third down, and the train just keeps on going. That's true. That's, you didn't know who they were really signaling when they called it out? They want to yeah. rally all our when audience? When I heard that train in the press box, I didn't know that was for train wreck sports, but now I know. It's good. So you just got off the golf That's course. good branding. This is the first time I've ever seen you wearing something other than like a really nice suit or a lax penny. Oh man, I'm a scrub. Scrub, <laughs> sweatpants, hoodie. It's a nice, I've had a nice these, athletic outfit. These are from 2009. Ooh. Hyper Dunks. Very tough. How'd you shoot some on these things? Awful. 89. So that's why you showed up a little bit off schedule. You were targeting like 6, 6, 15. Very we were wondering sad. what was happening with that. Double bogey to finish. Oh. Might have grounded a club. Very sad. You know. So what, what are your you thoughts think? on, uh, I don't know if I'm even saying this right, John Rahm. I <laughs> love Rahmer. The Spaniard. It's horrible. He's horrible, but you bet on him and you lost. Oh, <laughs> that's not that's not wrong. Talk about cutting right through to it. Oh, God. Just like I bet the Sabers Monday. Now we're all good about you know real journalism here at Training Sports, so I just have to follow up on something you said, Jonah. Okay. You're a self-admitted scrub. You said that no more than one minute ago. Yes. Is that a fact? I'm not sure. Okay. And you also had scrub, scrub off the air. You also admittedly have not it. pursued women in six to eight years. Yeah, I have a girlfriend. Were you forever damaged by the TLC song No Scrubs? Forever damaged. You know what's funny? I was just texting with one of my buddies. He didn't even know what TLC stood for. He had to Google it today. Thought it was like Channel Forty Four on Time Warner Cable. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that TLC was an acronym for something. Shout out to uh, No Scrubs. Great song from the '90s. Used to listen to that. Came out the same year as Smooth by uh, Santana and uh, what's his butt, Rob, Rob Thomas. Fun mm -hmm. facts. A little too fun for this show, I think. And Mambo number five. Oh my god. Same All -time year. Classic. Now we're pumping it up a yeah. little bit. <laughs> that pumps it up. Oh yeah. So we're here in Adam Benini to the morning show. Yeah. Are you the future of Channel 2 Sports? Uh, I cannot comment at this time. Uh, Can or won't? I cannot. Oh. Big difference. Yes, big difference. Um, when I know more, I'll announce it. So in these past five years, <laughs> have you gotten offers to go somewhere else? Yes. And you've stayed in Buffalo? Correct. Higher paying jobs? Yes. <laughs> Higher paying jobs you stayed? Yes. Get real personal with the questions. I'll, I'll answer what do you them as long as I can answer them, yeah. Okay. Is it safe to say you chased your dream and you ended up here in Buffalo? I chased my dreams more than I chased women. I think that's pretty established. But both have led me here. So that was a good answer, right? right? See, that's how you become three-time in minute. Yeah. So you said you've been in a relationship for, what, six, seven years? No. It's been multiple over that time. <laughs> but I just oh. haven't been single. For an extended period of time. It's not really my fault. Oh, see, I thought you were with the same one. No, I've for been with a very years. special lady for uh, over two years now. Um, and uh, A big rival of Channel 2. Could not be happier. Yeah. Could not be happier? Could not be happier. Amazing. Just amazing. Now, is there a rivalry in like the whole Channel 2, Channel 4, Channel, Channel 7? I think with the young generation, no. Because we hang out, we don't really pay attention to ratings. Some of us might not be here in two, three, four years, so why get so caught up with competition if, you know, why sully, well, why ruin a relationship with somebody if you're not gonna be, you know, in that market in, in three years, it'd be silly. But I think with maybe some of the other people, you know, older generations who work in this market, yeah, because they've worked here for so long, there's been such strong competition, the ratings have fluctuated so much. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I understand why it happens. I, I just prefer not to get so worked up about it. I figure if I just do my job, do my craft to the best of my ability, people will watch hopefully, um, and that's it. Okay. So well, with that said, real quick, yep. we, we hit sweeps week. You know you're turning Bove's read receipts off. You're not responding to them. Let's go. WGRZ to the top. How right? did you have Bove on here before me? Someone just commented, actually, where is Bove? It I was had, yesterday. It was I yesterday. Matt Bove. <laughs> you're a day late, commenter. Shout out to Matt Bove for showing up like he's going to a middle school dance yesterday. That was incredible. <laughs> Collared shirt. Did he have a Puka, Puka shell necklace on too? I think. I, I think. Did he have a sure necklace did. like that? He definitely had an American Eagle polo. That was yeah. great. That was great. So How's the shot guys look good. So when you're not wearing scrubs, though, you're wearing the collared shirt. I mean, right? Yeah, I'll, dr I'll dress up. You caught me at a bad time, but I'll, you know, I'll own it. I'll You'll look like Bobe. I'll live with it. No, I'll never look like Bobe. Come on. He he had a he had a big Bobe. day. He had a big day there for the Bobe show. Bobe is a good looking man. That's a good looking kit. He had what, a two year anniversary? Three year? Look at this. You're getting a whole oh, yeah, bunch four of year. Four year getting a whole bunch of relationship. Four years? Yeah, seriously. He finished it. he finished his first uh you got bachelors. You guys bachelors at uh WKBW? Moving on to a master's program, we heard. And looking good. Good for him. That's great. So one of the big things that's happened oh, there's been a couple major things that have happened in the news for you know, channel, channel 2, Channel 4, Channel 7. One's Don Paul. You love Don Paul. One's Scott Levin. talked about Don P like a thousand times yesterday. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> deal. He retires from Channel 4, then he's magically at Channel 7. You haven't noticed? That's the new in vogue thing. Temporary retirement or stepping away. Yeah. Um, who, started the, who started that first? Yeah. Athletes or, or news broadcasters? The temporary retirement. I'm trying to give you segues here because I know you got topics you need to touch on. Scott Levin. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he really picked that one up and ran with it. Scott Levin, what do you got to say? I'm just, I'm lobbing the ball. Yep, perfect. I'm CP3, and you're Clint Capella. Because he's on the Rockets now. CP3. What about it? I mean, the guy, once again, it was one of those, it was a, it was a tough loss for Channel 2 viewers. They went through a very tough time. Viewers are fiercely loyal in Buffalo. And they don't yes. like change. And a lot of people went to out, war. When you take out a main anchor from the most watched station in town, ratings wise, so that's what happens. Sometimes there's a, there's an overreaction. Now I don't. I thought Adam was doing an awesome job in the prime time, and I think sometimes viewers just need time to get used to somebody new. I think that's a huge factor in a lot of things. Um, but that adjustment period takes time. It doesn't happen in three four months. So. Um, you know, Levin's back, and you know, this this career works for him, and he's got a great gig at too. And you know, we like him, we love him, we have great chemistry. So, uh, you know, glad to have him, and I'm glad Benini has you know found what you know he enjoys. And if that's morning news, more power to him. Do you see Nick Filipowski at Channel Two in the next six to twelve months? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I don't know. I'm. I'm just. I'm glad Nick. I, yeah, yeah. I'm just glad Nick. You know, landed Honestly. somewhere. Yeah, not only yeah, and and it's a good job for him. And did you realize he natural. packed his bags? He packed his bags, and you thought he was going out of town. Yeah. You think and that's, that's got to be an awesome feeling to know you don't have to? Right. Run. His daughter, born and raised in Buffalo. Are you kidding me? And he's staying in Buffalo. Yeah. I'm I can't. I can't do it. I'm, I'm happy, happy for him too. I'm happy. The guy's awesome. Do you think with all these surprise returns, switching allegiances, that this is the closest that Buffalo News Media will ever become to the WWE? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. All right. I mean, I don't really watch the WWE, so I don't know how to respond to that. Oh, my gosh. Is that sad? Is that bad? It's sad for me, not for everyone else and probably most of our viewers. That's one of the top. You don't know. Stars. There's a lot of wrestling fans out there. Mm -hmm. A lot more than I thought there were when I was growing up. We're all looking at L because he just... Al's one of the teammates that I brought this many, up. He hates very few things in life, but WWE is one of them. So. Oh, you hate WWE? And the Buffalo Bandits. There goes half our viewers. Yep, there goes, there goes literally 38% uh, uh, of our strike, like, so close to home. See yeah. I mean, Why? We asked him this. Yeah, I'm, I'm commandeering this interview now. Good now. job. Oh, well, well, well commandeering. I would love it. 
now no, they, they can raise. This is Jonah Javad with Channel Two Sports. I'm here in Trainwreck. Uh, Degenerate Al, why do you hate the Buffalo Bandits? That seems like such an arbitrary thing to hate. They could they could raise twenty consecutive banners, and I would never attend a game. Wouldn't care. Wouldn't affect my life. I just don't understand why people get excited for. Them. I don't. I don't understand it. You just can't let people. I, mean, I, I can. I think. Yeah. The only reason people go to that game, I feel like, is to get absolutely hammered. That's it. What about Bison's games? <sighs> Celery. That's it. Celery is the only reason why. I, that's the first time I went to a game in six, seven years was because of Celery. How many people that go to Bison's games are actually watching the game and not there to just drink or to enjoy the day? There are some Bison's freaks. Oh no! No, no! no. There's some people that like are there. Yeah, like, they're diehards. They're true Let's win that Triple A. They're true fans of every sport, every team the in the city. Count. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying, if you're gonna go percentage wise. A lot of folks just like to go enjoy the day and have a few beverages and go home. They're not necessarily watching. You know, are they gonna throw the off speed on a three-one count? It's, it's not a reality. Mm-hmm. When I go to Fenway Park, I watch half the game. I'm spending half my time in a beer line. Or talking with friends or with family and enjoying the day. Okay. Not always locked in. But that's baseball. Are you a diehard Red Sox fan? No, not diehard. Um, I am a partial Red Sox fan and Cubs fan. What what about the Reds? The Reds? Yeah. What about them? You're a Bengals fan. No, no, it doesn't matter. No, Bengals are uh, exclusive. Just Bengals. How did you hop on the Bengals? Uh, It was 97. Did not like the Patriots. My father was not a Patriots fan, nor was my mother. And I needed my own team. And uh, just the Pats were bad, and I didn't like cheering for Drew Bledsoe. And I used to play Madden, whatever it was, 97, and I liked the Bengals jerseys, even though they were really ugly at the time. And so I latched on to Peter, no, it wasn't Peter Work. It was Corey Dillon and Darnay Scott. Achilles Smith? Achilles Smith. Came, out in, came in in 99. Jeff Blake. Man, that team was so bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just got hooked. I liked their jerseys, and I was a Bengals fan ever since. And I've been, it's been a lot of misery. Good times. All right, we asked Bovey yesterday. Listen, I know y'all are Bills fans, but we this is shared misery. It doesn't have to be Bills fans versus Bengals fans. We can all just come together and, 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 and hate the football gods equally. You understand? Because mm-hmm. Bengals fans, not a huge fans of the Patriots. Oh, yeah, it would be the most loser thing ever to compare who's suffered more. No, we should absolutely just join together. Right, and I, see, and I see all these think pieces on the ringer and whatnot of who fan, which NFL fan base has a worse. Listen, if you haven't won a Super Bowl, you got bad. <laughs> Serious, that's just, that's flat out. And if you're in the AFC in the last 20 years, you got it really bad. It's facts. Until Brady retires. Hot jam, by the way. All right, we asked Bobe yesterday. One on one through ten scale, how do the Key Bank Center hot dog, press box hot dogs rank on that scale? Oh, negative, that was just a terrible negative question. Four. But negative, negative four. Negative four. Yikes! I don't eat hot dogs anymore. Anyway. Oh. We need you real quick to get a no, Jonah. No, no, just if you're gonna eat, if you're gonna eat hot dogs, go get yourself a cheeseburger instead. If you if you think a hot dog is a good idea. Find a different sandwich. See, this is why so you're saying a hot dog is a sandwich. sandwich? Oh, for sure it is. See, I'm progressive. I'm a progressive type. Why uh, Why put restrictions on a hot dog? Why does a hot dog have to just be a hot dog? What if the hot dog wants to be a sandwich? Have you asked the hot dog? I mean, I, See, I, this is channel two, asking the, asking the tough have questions. You? <laughs> You've spoken to a hot dog. Yeah, once. And, what, and it's... And it, it or he or she yeah. said it replied I'm a sandwich. It replied, you might want to take a cat home. <laughs> I'm sweet, that one. I, <laughs> our rundowns are just there they yeah, go. I got, yeah, you I had got. a rundown to start? That was a bad idea with me. This is why I get paid. What we need what we need to do now though. This, 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 thoroughly... train, this train goes off the rails, baby. Oh. Well, hey, it never stops oh, one way or the man. other. Yeah, we need to break it off the rails. It's going down a freaking path. That, no, I don't know. <laughs> exactly, and that's the best part. Where you don't see every time I show up to work, I think it, you know maybe the, the the rundown will go this way, maybe uh, the interview will go this way, and then it doesn't. This is a prime example. It's Not all the interviews are going to go based on your rundown. So take it where it goes. It's a fact. What's the next topic? Our commenters are not happy with 
with what you just said. About what? About the train derailing. This train is going off the tracks. In, in terms of the interview, not the train wreck as the enterprise. <laughs> you got to relax. Point. He's okay. We'll get him back on track. With that said, John, we what also what we got from Bove was a press box snack breakdown. So when you're there and you are eat, you do you eat. The are press we talking box? bills or sabers? Sabers. Key bank. Okay. What what are you going? What's your what's your power ranking breakdown? Top five of what they got to offer. Top there? five. Top five. Um. Jeez, guys. Uh, Hard hitting questions here. We warned you. What did Bove say? Top pick. No. Peanut M and M's. Sure. So you're just gonna copy Bove? That doesn't sound like what the leading don't uh, ask industry me questions uh, about the rest box food. I don't eat sounds like sounds like food. Channel Seven's a lot closer to Channel Two than uh, the news loves on. If you ask me. New question. I'm not answering questions about press box food. It's all garbage. Ooh, ooh, all right. Well, that's a statement in itself. There it is. Don't eat press box food unless it's the bill. They got a good fire. <laughs> I mean, I just crumpled up all my questions and threw them. So. I'm gonna fall asleep with him. Give me something Here good, boys. Come on. Give me something. Ask me something. Okay. Yeah, you commandeered this interview. All right, we're going back. How long have you been doing interviews? Like these live shows? Yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Live shows like this with you? Two two weeks. Okay. Did you do anything like this beforehand? Do anything like what? Live shows. Any interviews? Any? Uh, do you have any background? We went. Media, we, yeah, we, we had a couple live shows for Bills games. We've been to Nashville for at their Bills backers bar. We've been to Rock Bottom twice now. And that's no, that's the part where you look at the camera and you tell them the Rock Bottom special. I already did. Yeah, they but already you know. Tell them again. But they you know. say Rock Bottom. No, two fifty special. They already know. I'm just saying. Did diehard followers know the special? Yeah, diehard followers. Die hard special. Our <laughs> diehard followers, they play but, Word Association. But Rock not, Bottom. We're not worried about the diehard followers. followers. It's about the new. That's true. You gotta let them know. Um, okay, so you've been doing this for two weeks. What's next? Who's next? Who's next? Who's gonna give you that interview that you guys need? That groundbreaker. To be honest, you want me to tell you? What, what do we need? We need a. If we could get a Buffalo Bill Ooh. or Buffalo Saber, that's the next stop. Okay, pro player. Ideally, who is it? And it's gotta be. Not top tier. See, that's the thing. Obviously, we've only, we only deal with top I'm tier. Sorry, Lashawn, clearly why yours is on the show. is not walking through that door. Well, obviously, it's, that. it's dudes only in here. That's that goes without saying. That's fine. Ideally, let's get. How about we have the Buffalo Bill we already had on the show? Eric Wood. That's a great call. Where are we good? We've already had Lorenzo it. Alexander. That's Should good. we all be worried that Lorenzo Alexander is not verified on Twitter, but he's on it like every day? He's not verified. Think about that. Well, isn't that a little worrisome, Jonah? I mean, these are some big stories we got to be attacking here. I haven't seen that on Channel 4. What, is it, a fake Twitter account for Lorenzo Alexander? <laughs> Perfect target. <laughs> what about Richie Incognito? Richie would be fun. He's a bar school guy. He likes to, uh, he does a lot of radio spots. That would be a good target for you guys. Let's get Richie on the show. Richie, come on the show. That's the thing. It's like, that's what we need. We need a Bills a player or a Sabres player. I mean, we have these reporters who are on the golf course, and what are they got a date at the, at the Walden Gallery? So they'll stop by for a little bit and do a show. <laughs> and it's not, that, you know, we need that. Next, That's not good. We I'm need getting... someone who's busier that will come to the. I doubt it though. Will they come to this? My life is not that? all that exciting, man. You're scrubs. Yeah, baby. What did you want me to show up in a suit? Scrubs, wiped up six, seven years. Yeah, I'll do a quick show for 30 minutes. We got a couple recommendations no? from the listeners. Vlad Dukas might be like a good uh, add-on. Oh, no. Tim Horton might raise our profile, get us uh, the mentions that we want. Some good uh, some good input here from the, oh, from the train boy. passengers. Jonah, how do you compare with the other JJs in the world of sports? We got JJ Watt, JJ Reddick. Julio Jones. Julio Jones. <laughs> they, do they have Emmys? I don't think so. Nope. <laughs> well, for uh, all we know, they could. <laughs> JJ Watt raised a bunch of money for Houston, but does he have an Emmy? <laughs> oh, no. JJ Watt's great. I, I used to think JJ Watt was a little corny. Just, I don't know. He was thrown he was. in our face a lot with ads. It's a popular opinion. But I'll tell you what. If you go out and raise $37 plus million for hurricane relief, I don't care how many ads you do or whatever Gatorade commercials. 
True. You're a one in my book. That that's great. Love JJ Reddick. Also, I don't know why he got a bunch of tattoos on his left arm like two seasons ago. All, it was like like a midlife crisis, and he just got a whole bunch of tats on his arm, and now he's got a sleeve of tattoos. JJ Reddick, the like pristine white boy from Duke. It's he crazy. went all Hollywood when he yeah. went to the Clippers. Yeah. All right, I got a question for you. The Blizzard of 2018, how much money do you think you could raise? Blizzard? Oh, two, oh are you... Don't do hypotheticals. Like, if you started this GoFundMe, I'm Jonah Javad from Channel 2 Sports, I'm looking to raise money for this community, how much do you think you could raise? I think I could raise 10 grand. So, it's like, your follower amount on Twitter. There you go. Dollar okay. per follower. It's dollar per follower. I can see that. I can see that. Can you share with dollar. us some of Kevin O'Connell's secrets? Like, is there going to be a blizzard in 2018? That's bad. I know he knows. <laughs> yeah. Not Check. like Don Paul in 06. <laughs> Man, y'all rag on Don P. Like no, we that. love him. We need. That's, that's what we need on the show more than, like, Richie and Cognito. We're, we're need Don we're Paul all, right here on this couch. We're all for saying that, you know, you'll say it's 80 and then it ends up being 60. But, I mean, when you <laughs> say that nothing's coming and then literally an apocalypse happens, that's a little bit troublesome. Hey, one year anniversary. Yep, October storm today. Is it? Yeah, the anniversary of the storm. Oh man, Poor let's summer. go. Isn't it unbelievable to think that Western New York is just getting wiped out by snow right Sh- now? Shouts, shouts, shouts to North Buffalo who got about a s- three inches of snow that day. It yeah. was tough. It was tough for them. It's cold. It's hard, man. Had to wipe off the windshield. <laughs> Vicious. Are, are you in North Towns guy or South Towns? I've North lived in North both. Towns. I'm currently North Towns. Okay. Good choice. But that didn't answer the question. Yeah, Are you overall, we need your allegiances. At heart, I'm a South Towns guy. Yes. At heart. <laughs> we got audible yeses from the crowd here at Studio B. I don't know. I'm What's just... so good about the South Towns? It's quiet. Mm-hmm. It's laid back. Wait, wait, wait. What, is South, what is South Towns? South Towns? What, what, how do you describe South Towns? South Towns is like okay, South Are you talking Gallery. South Buffalo or are you talking East Aurora? What is yeah, South Towns? Yeah, East Aurora, oh. Hamburg, Orchard Park. Oh, uh, I mean, no, then I'm probably North Side. North what were you thinking? Have, you, wait, have you ever been to Northside? North oh, okay, yeah. South Buffalo. Yeah. Gotcha. Have you ever been to Northside before it shut down? UB South? No. Wait, maybe I have. I don't know. I'm not sure. Alright. Yeah, I, wait. Do people call South Towns like East Aurora and OP or is it? No, it's South, South Buff- Buffalo and Down. South, South Buffalo, Buffalo and Down, down West Seneca. Okay. Right, shout out to South Buffalo. That's, that, was my, uh, that was my old joint back in the day. Lackawanna. Got love me some Abbott Road. Show. Sure. Okay. South Park Avenue. Abbott Pizza. Carbones. Abbott Pizza. Abbott Pizza. It's a jam. You think Abbott Pizza is some of the best pizza in Buffalo? Where's your Where's your Abbott best pizza P- in Abbott Buffalo? Abbott Pizza is really good. Um. I am a. Uh, I'm partial to. Was it Allen Allentown Pizza? Allentown Pizza. Chelsea. Holy moly, Joey! These are usually the questions that we rapid fire at people. And I think you just right off the bat, like you got L to fall asleep, like you. I'm looking at Al's. I'm right looking now. at Al's questions over here. I'm just gonna ask them myself. I think Al have one too many solo cups. <laughs> Bombs away, Al. Break, break down, Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's break down Tyrod Taylor. Um, well, you need receivers that can get open. You need receivers that can stay healthy. You need tight ends that can stay healthy. And he's thrown two interceptions to six touchdowns through the first five weeks. And they're still three and two. Can we not jump off the Tyrod Taylor train? Shouts to the trains. Um, until maybe the Bills are out of playoff contention. I mean, he had them three and one. Y'all were ready to run through a wall. Not then, for, so, no, so they I'm lose to the Bengals. I'm not and that's changing. Every, every, time, every time the Bills lose... Fans want to bench Tyrod Taylor. That is the first thing they want to do. They start at 3-1. You lose a game. It happens in the NFL. You lose to a team They're that you should. They're ready to run through a wall after a 3-1. Oh, they were, they were after Taylor. you beat the Falcons, were you in Atlanta? Uh, I was at rock uh-oh. bottom. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shout out to rock bottom. Shout out to rock bottom. Yeah. I, I mean, where did I did I did go. Go. No, it wasn't in Atlanta, but it wasn't a run through wall for him. 
No, not for him, but for the game. Oh, I thought that's what you were. Oh, <laughs> manage the game. You don't turn the ball over. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that was the right. It's, it's not even the game. The McDermott. How do you think Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl a few years ago? The McDermott recipe. Yeah, just don't suck. Just don't suck. In all fairness, okay. Flacco played amazing in those playoffs. Yeah, in the playoffs. He played, uh, I mean, yeah. In the playoffs, he stepped his game up. But, but to make it, a, he played on level. And yeah, it's the McDermott recipe. You listen. hold the team to below twenty-one points exactly. that you're facing. You don't allow a fifty-plus yard touchdown, which they did. And you don't turn the ball over. You don't do anything too special to win games in the McDermott recipe. If you had to take a guess, who, who's going to be the quarterback next year? Just take a guess. Well, the real question is, will Tyrod be the starter heading into training camp? Sorry. A little bit more controversial. You know, that's a great question. And whatever my answer is, it's just a shot in the dark because it has to do with how many wins they have this season. Um, assuming they make the playoffs, Tyrod's probably the quarterback next year. If they don't make the playoffs, I don't think the QB is on the roster. They're starting QB. That's just my opinion. If they don't make the playoffs, I think next year's starting quarterback will come from the draft or free agency or trade or whatever. Oh, by the way, there's going to be a lot of changes for the Bills in the offseason. A lot of big names that you got used to over the years did not expect them to be on the team next year. I'm telling you right now. If they don't make the playoffs. Why, are you really going to dog Russ Brandon like that? No, I'm not dogging him. How's that dogging Russ Brandon? <laughs> Poking the bear. Expectations in Colombia for Mizzou hoops. <laughs> National championship, anything else is a bust. <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. is going to be the first overall pick. Right, this guy's lost. Well, you know, you got UB big stealing big prospects from Qs. That's a fact. Blondes or brunettes? Black. All of them. Uh, I agree with that. Impartial. I agree with that. I thought you were going to say All blondes. Of them. I'm not sure why. There are pretty redheads. Not you, <laughs> One of them. What else you got? Give me some rapid fire. I mean, the rapid fire, I mean, maniac. Lightning round? You got anything, anything real quick you fire? Let's go lightning. I'm well, sorry. Here, I'm not that well, you, well, you're the one talking. You, you're, you still have faith in Tyrod, clearly. So let's just get it. Are the Bills going to make the playoffs this year? Gosh. You know what? They should. You look at their schedule, they should. With this start, they definitely Go beat the Colts. Beat the Chargers, beat the Dolphins twice, beat the Jets again, and what? They're at nine wins. Is that mm-hmm. nine wins? Yep. Mm-hmm. Eight or nine. Do that. Go beat teams you're better than. And then what? They need to steal one from the Bucks, the Saints. Chiefs, the Patriots twice, and Saints. And the Saints. And that's at Buffalo. Well, and then go steal one, and you're at ten wins, and that gets you into playoffs. Well, I don't see why they sh- why they can't. If the defense plays well. And Trey White realizes that not every game is going to be an interception or a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Sometimes it's just keeping the man in front of you. They'll be fine. They just got busted for two huge plays against A.J. Green, who is a Hall of Fame receiver. I think that game is, a, is an entirely different story if Charles Clay is on the field. Well, they lost by four points, and they were, and they looked like they should have lost by one. So mm-hmm. take it with a grain of salt. DJ Supreme. Just Robin shout out to DJ Supreme. Shout out, shout out to DJ Supreme. DJ two for Supreme. one special. <laughs> everyone has two for one specials nowadays. <laughs> Everyone's an Emmy winner and everyone has two for one specials. Joking shout out to DJ it. Supreme. Yeah. Three time Emmy winner. Can I get a Goose Bombers? Three time Emmy winner. Okay, so we went. To, uh, Topher, hit him with it. Does Robin Lander ever make a shootout save ever again? <laughs> no. Oh, we got more audience coming. Oh, Robbie's got some. <laughs> he just screamed <laughs> it. What did he say? He said we have more audience members coming. Audience members. Oh. Will Robin Leonard yeah. make the will make a shootout save? He's made one, right? Of course, he made one. He made They're one sprinkled save. in. Off, off, off the post. post. Not nearly as bad as everyone's making out the situation to be with the same result ending. What do you think on that end of things? I'll tell you what, that defense needs to get it figured out ASAP. Because that's why they brought him. Housley is in for a reason. So, they need to get squared away. I think they can pick up a win tonight against San Jose. They'll be fine. Again, they started 1 4 and 1 the year they made the playoffs last year. Just chill out. Oh, relax. Got the Sharks tonight. We usually handle them pretty well. Got the Sharks tonight. Gonna lose 7 to 3. It'll be fine. Alright, I got one for you. Season's over. Fire Housley. Yep, fire <laughs> <laughs> Who would win in a fight, you or Nick Filipowski? What is with your infatuation with Nick Filipowski? Who would, you, who would win in a fight? Nick 
Matt Bove. Ooh. Ooh. Where's he going? Didn't see that one. So coming. Matt Bove would be, it, it would be like your WWE that you made so much. Matt Bove would just come in unannounced. By God, that's like, Bove's music. How yeah, about how about you or Matt Bove? Oh, me for sure. Come on. Matt Bove? Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Matt, come on. On this program, we're we got to... watching right now. Oh, he is. He is. Absolutely. Coming for you, Matt. Bove was talking smack. That's the start of the perfect WWE throwdown. You need to have this. Is this going to be the... giving me ideas. We, you know, I'm going to text Matt after this. Is this going to be the week that unravels... We'll do it for charity. Matt Bove and I will, will, will do a WWE throwdown. What? Now that would get some viewers, right? Am yeah. I crazy? That's how you win an Emmy. M multiple times, obviously. Um, now we got on this program the train wreck tracker. We were running the Bills versus the Sabres. Who's more of a quote unquote train wreck right now? But we think that kind of the consensus is that the Sabres are definitely more than the Bills. So we kind of re. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Bills have a winning them. record. I yeah. don't know how you could say they're. You know, so week to week, some people are just down on him and Tyrod. Obviously, though, like we said, there's a problem with the Bills' offense. It's borderline anemic at this point. It's one of the worst in the league. Yeah, I still, I'm going to go with the Bills just for the mere fact there is a lot of change coming next offseason. And this season starting great, it could turn real quick. Real quick. I mean, if you start losing the Colts and Chargers, there's going to be no faith that team's not going to have any confidence. And then, you know, I'd rather, you know, follow a, a Sabres team that's trying to, you know, figure it out than, than a Bills team that's going south. So. I don't know, man. I, I think, for the most part, Buffalo sports fans got to be at least happy these days. I know it's not perfect, but, you know, there's so much season left for both teams. The Bills aren't 0-5. They're not tanking like we thought they were going to in July and August. That's a plus. The Sabres, sure, they're not, they haven't won a game yet, but they got, they got Eichel. They got that dude locked up for another eight-plus years. That's huge. Like how's that? Like, aren't you pumped about that? You got a Yankees jersey on. Your team's in the final four. It's big, huge win last night. Celebrate. CC Sabathia. Rock bottom. Two for ones. Would you go? I'll, to I'll take over the show. You can go. I love place. it. Keep going. This is amazing. I, when you're running this, I I need to couch. Takes this. the pressure off me. This is great. I'll read your questions. Yeah, what else you got? Uh, night out with Marshawn Lynch. Oh, yeah. Or a weekend with Mike Cho. No, I don't even... That, the moment you said a weekend with Marshawn Lynch... <laughs> no, 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 night like, out. Night out. You only get one night out. Four hours of Mar brunch with Marshawn Lynch. I mean, he is wow. one of my all-time favorite athletes, and I don't care if he hates the media. I love Marshawn Lynch. Terrible driver. Probably. Not. <laughs> hey, real quick. He just believes Wait, I'm running through people. What one way or the other. I don't want to get it. I'm not talking about that, but from a sheer personality standpoint, I think Marshawn Lynch is one of the most fascinating people in all of sports because I think his mind and his heart are in the right place. His actions just haven't always followed through. Was he driving the vehicle though? I have no idea. I wasn't here when that happened. Of course he was. That no, they don't know. Really it's not even a question. It's a conspiracy theory. It could have been James Hardy. Could have been Hardy. I'm not even joking. How do what do Buffalo fans think of Marshawn nowadays? I love him. I'm a fan. You are? Yeah. Because I know some people that don't, but it helped that he got traded, because yeah. it's like hard to hold him like accountable for the fact that he got traded. If he left and signed with the Seahawks, we'd probably hate him a little bit more. It's just crazy. That team had CJ, Fred, and Marshawn. They had Fred and Marshawn and they drafted CJ. I mean yeah. that's like I, like we were excited about that because everyone That's was hyping stupid. CJ is the greatest thing ever in that draft. But honestly, looking back on it, it was a pretty irresponsible decision. Oh, yeah, it was reckless. Yeah, I mean, when you have two running backs like that who are solid. But that was before my time. I don't, I don't really have a lot of opinions about that. I was still following the Bills from afar and watching them get off to hot starts, give Ryan Fitzpatrick a bunch of money, and they missed the playoffs again. Set. I'll never forget how they paid. They gave him that contract, but then just like he had such a bad game against the Dolphins the next day, like they never really did like a presser or anything for it. It was just no. like, and people were wondering like, did that contract really exist? Yes. Once they start that year, was that five and two? Yep. 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 Yeah, I remember. I was watching. And I was like, oh, Bills are. Uh, Bills good. <laughs> this is the tale of Jonah Javad. Well, that's, that's not that interesting. It's really not that interesting. I mean, I can tell you some stories, but I can't, they're not. I can't tell you on this. Alan, so, Big go. Twelve in the SEC. What are your thoughts on that, Missouri? That was like six years ago. Yeah, what are you, five years ago. How do you get? How do you get up for like Georgia at home for a minute? Oh, football? I don't. Like, I'm not gonna watch the Missouri football game. Right. You're not. Oh, absolutely. They're gonna. They're gonna lose by like 40 points. That's not what I say. It's 
you can't you cannot get up for that game. Why not? You missed out on all those rivalries in the Big Twelve. No, I'm ready for basketball season, national championship. Are they are they preseason top twenty five? What? Are they preseason top twenty five? Uh, they haven't come out with the preseason yet, I don't think. Are they? Yeah. They got the top player in the country. Hell yeah. Let's go. I'm ready. Went real well for Washington last year. Mm. I'll see you for the opener. Rock bottom. Two for one. Okay. All right, Alan, one. Maybe he'll join us. Who knows? Alan, I know you got one final question written on that sheet. I think he's already answered this. Is it something about Filipowski or Beauvais? So, or Don Ball. If you're, if you're Don Ball. That's a great, you know what, that's a, you just, I got a new question. <laughs> Who is the most loyal? Nick Filipowski, Don Paul, or Scott Levin? Out of those three. It's Levin. Levin? Yeah, he's the only one that didn't change stations. It's Good true. Boy. A quick, nice retirement, sold a couple of nice Buicks, and he's back. <laughs> so, you know what? I, I'm, I'm final sure he wasn't a salesman. I think he was in finance, but yeah, okay. He, he might have been doing something with the accounting books. I don't know what the hell he was doing. Same the bugs. Right. But... Does this train ever stop? Hell no. George Vaughn, thank you very much. All the viewers and listeners, thank you. Good night now. <laughs>